let's talk about the potential for hydrogen to save the world. Or at least the possibility that utilizing hydrogen for energy can make the world a safer, more peaceful, and healthier place to live. With the 27th United Nations Climate Change Conference going on right now, there is a lot of talk about the subject of reaching net zero emissions and halting the march of global temperatures as they continue to rise and bring environmental havoc on a scale that we've never experienced in modern times. There is noticeably less talk at this conference about how we're actually going to do that, and that is concerning. We know the basics of green electricity, and we talk about them often around here. Solar and wind generation, battery storage, electrifying transport, these are great things. But electricity alone can't cover all of the bases when it comes to our sustainable energy needs. So, we're going to need a boost, and we need it fast. Hydrogen could be the answer. If we look at global consumption, about 20% of our energy right now is coming from electricity or electrons, while the remaining 80% comes from molecular energy. That means burning stuff, primarily coal, diesel fuel, and natural gas. Some of that 80% can be converted to the electrical energy, but most of it can't, or at least not anytime soon. And we don't have time to wait for the technology to catch up. Not only has the climate put us on a timeline, but we're also seeing the European nations caught up in a violent conflict between Russia and Ukraine. The majority of the supply for Europe's molecular energy comes from Russia. That is a problem. The natural gas taps have been turned off as Europe sits on the precipice of a long, dark winter filled with uncertainties. Now is the winter of our discontent, as Shakespeare so aptly put it. But the son of York is unlikely to bring glorious summer this time around. They need energy, and they need a source that isn't controlled by any global superpower, friendly or otherwise. Hydrogen is a solution to a great many problems we face. It is an incredibly dense store of molecular energy, and unlike its carbon-based relatives, such as methane, hydrogen can be burned without creating excess CO2 for the atmosphere. It is a clean fuel. So, we've talked in the past about hydrogen power in the context of a passenger vehicle with a fuel cell that converts hydrogen into electricity to drive a motor, and we concluded that this wasn't particularly a good idea. We had to side with Elon Musk and his position that fuel cell vehicles are kind of stupid. In that scenario, batteries are a better solution. But that's not going to be true in all scenarios. What we're looking at today is hydrogen as a direct replacement for natural gas and diesel, a combustible molecular energy source. Also wanted to give a quick shout out to our amazing Discord community. Here is our question of the week, and this was our favorite answer. And here is the meme of the week winner. Join our Discord community to participate next week through the link in the description below. Hydrogen is at the top of the periodic table for a reason. It is the most abundant element in the known universe. Hydrogen is everywhere. The interesting thing about hydrogen is that it is a highly reactive element, or in a more simple sense, it's very sticky. Hydrogen is never found on its own. It always clings to something else. That's how we get water, of course. Two hydrogen atoms stick together with one oxygen. It's also how we get hydrocarbons. Those are just various combinations of hydrogen and carbon atoms. Methane, which is the bulk of what we call natural gas, is what happens when four hydrogen atoms meet one carbon. But you can also get something like the propane that fuels your barbecue. That's a more complex gathering of three carbon and eight hydrogen. Okay, that's about as deep as we'll get into the chemistry stuff here, but it is important to know where hydrogen can be found so that we can get into how we collect it. As easily as hydrogen atoms get stuck on other elements, they can fairly easily be unstuck. Electrolysis is a simple process of running electricity through water to separate hydrogen from oxygen. This is a common science experiment. You run wires from the positive and negative terminals of a battery, 
dip them into your glass of salt water, and bubbles will immediately form on the electrodes. One terminal will create pure oxygen gas, and the other will create pure hydrogen gas. You could even drop a 9 volt battery right into a glass of salt water and start generating hydrogen gas. You shouldn't do that, but it would work. Unfortunately, if you want to scale up the volume of water to an industrial level of hydrogen production, you need to also scale up the electrical energy. And that is problematic, because if the source of that electricity is not clean, then we aren't gaining any ground on sustainability. Actually, we're losing energy in the process through inefficiency and it's all kind of pointless. That's why the majority of hydrogen that we use today doesn't come from water, it comes from hydrocarbons. And that is where methane comes back into the picture. You can get four hydrogen atoms for every molecule of methane, with one carbon atom released as a byproduct. They call this process steam methane reformation. Obvious downside there being the excess carbon. And that's where so-called blue hydrogen comes into play. This is steam reformation combined with carbon capture, which sounds like a great solution until you realize that they are only capturing a small percentage of the carbon released, and most of it still ends up in the atmosphere. Not surprisingly, this method is heavily endorsed by the legacy fossil fuel companies like Shell and BP. So, what we need is green hydrogen. That's the electrolysis method powered entirely by renewable electricity either from solar or wind or some combination of the two. If we are using that free sustainable energy to create our hydrogen, then we've transferred our electron energy into molecular energy with zero penalty to the environment. And then we can combust that hydrogen in the exact same way that we do with natural gas or diesel fuel. But we know that the only byproduct of that reaction will be water vapor. We are big fans of cars, but in our spare time we also love to play video games, which is why we're so excited to work with our sponsor Crossout today. Crossout is an online vehicle shooter where you create your own unique vehicles to face off against others in fast-paced PvP matches or cooperative PvE campaigns. Crossout is extremely easy to get into. You can craft a new vehicle from scratch in minutes with hundreds of parts, armor plating, and a huge assortment of weapons from cannons to laser guns and guided rockets. I really enjoy playing Crossout. It makes me feel as if I'm Mad Max gathering parts to customize my vehicle for battle. It's a rush. And best of all, you can play on PC along with the current and previous Xbox or PlayStation consoles. What I love about Crossout are the different play options. You have a highly developed PvE experience with complete free roam in a Mad Max setting. The characters are unique, the story is intriguing, and you can play at your own pace. Or if you prefer a faster pace of action, you can join the part-based matchmaking which will put you and your vehicle against players with similarly powerful vehicles to yours so you have a fair fight. And right now is the perfect time to join the action. With the new supercharged update, Crossout just got a massive overhaul with completely new graphics, improved effects, and redesigned physics to make Crossout more immersive than ever. If you have a PC, PlayStation, or Xbox, download and play Crossout today for free. But before you download the game, click on our link to get a free bonus pack with special parts and unique paint. We are big fans of Crossout, the game is a lot of fun, and we think you'll have a blast playing it too, so click on our link in the description to download and play Crossout today. So hydrogen is an incredibly energy-dense fuel, with three times the energy density of diesel and we can look no further than NASA's classic space shuttle or their brand new SLS rocket to see what hydrogen is capable of as a molecular fuel. Both of these launch systems use the Rocket Jet Aerodyne RS-25 engine, which burns a combination of liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen fuel, one of the most powerful chemical rocket engines in the world. Obviously, we don't need to go to the moon here, but we do need to power an economy, and that is actually a much more difficult proposition, because that involves a lot of different avenues of energy delivery, from powering people's homes, to industry, to shipping and transport. So let's start with the base level, keeping the lights on and the heaters heating. 
we can adapt an existing natural gas fired power plant to run on hydrogen fuel. It can be done and it is being done and it can have major advantages over other sustainable power generation. We're most familiar with solar and wind farms that generate green energy, but we know that these are limited in the fact that the sun does not always shine and the wind does not always blow. One way to level that playing field is with battery storage, a system like the Tesla Megapack. These work great, but there is a problem of availability and scalability. The supply of these giant batteries is limited and the cost is very high. We can store larger amounts of energy in hydrogen and we can do it cheaply. There is actually a project right now in the American state of Utah that is creating massive underground storage caverns for hydrogen in natural salt formations. It's a joint venture between Mitsubishi Power Americas and Magnum Development, funded by the US Department of Energy for $500 million, and their aim is to store 300 gigawatt hours of green hydrogen in underground salt domes. For a sense of scale here, one gigawatt is 1,000 megawatts. A Tesla Megapack stores three megawatts of energy. So this hydrogen storage is the equivalent to 100,000 Tesla Megapacks. And then to transfer that stored hydrogen into useful energy, we have the Intermountain Power Agency's IPP Renewal Project. This is an effort to retrofit a previously coal burning power plant to a gas turbine combined cycle generator. What this generator is going to be able to do is run a blend of 30% green hydrogen and 70% natural gas, and that's going to be online by 2025. And then, as the availability of green hydrogen increases, the plant will incrementally build up to a point where the gas turbine is powered entirely by hydrogen, with zero natural gas required. That is estimated at 2045. So even in the worst case scenario, that's a way to decrease natural gas usage by 30% in a relatively short amount of time. This project only began in 2019. And then we can look at the potential of hydrogen to power industry. That's also being done right now in the steel production industry. This is one of the highest polluting industries on earth because they use fossil fuels, mainly coal, in their blast furnaces to extract the hydrogen from iron ore to make steel. We need steel, we know that, but we can't afford to keep burning so much carbon fuel. The European steel manufacturing industry has begun leading the way in converting some of their processes to hydrogen power by using it as a coal substitute in the blast furnaces. Now, we're a long way from carbon neutral steel, that's astonishingly a goal for 2050, but we can start the reduction process right now around the world. We can even look at hydrogen as an energy source for zero emissions heavy vehicles. Everything from industrial digging machines like backhoes and dump trucks up to airplanes and even giant cargo ships. These are the vehicle applications where batteries just don't work. Batteries are great for passenger vehicles and it looks like they'll even work just fine in an application like a transport truck. But when we work up to these giant heavy duty working machines, the volume of batteries necessary to store the amount of energy that they need for a day of work is just going to be preposterously large, expensive, and would take way too long to recharge between use. Applications like ships and planes are also bad candidates for battery packs because weight is so critical because they need displacement to sit on top of the water or air, and the heavier the vehicle, the more displacement is required. It doesn't scale properly. But again, we can use hydrogen. You might be surprised to learn that there is a hydrogen powered passenger airplane in service right now. That's right, a zero emission plane. The commercial airline maker Airbus is leaning hard into their hydrogen powered future products with three hydrogen powered concept vehicles. The company is holding a summit on November 30th, 2022, where they are going to talk about their plans for sustainable air travel. There are already a number of small-scale hydrogen-powered prototype airplanes that have taken off in the past two years. We can even use hydrogen to power trans-ocean cargo ships, one of the single largest polluters in the world, but one of the most necessary industries to our global economy. 
So this is why hydrogen has so much potential. It's a way to take all of this green energy that we are capturing from the sun and the wind and store that energy in a much more useful fuel source, a molecular fuel source that we can gradually start rolling out directly to industries that are currently burning carbon-based fuel, and we can start transitioning from the old way to the new way, and we can do it right now. It's still going to take time to make the transition fully. Unfortunately, there's no way around that. But if we're trying to solve the problem of the day, which is a natural gas pipeline that has been shut off by a hostile new enemy, then we need a viable, safe, and secure alternative. For our money, that means green hydrogen, and lots of it. And of course, that's not even the full story. There is a lot to discuss about green hydrogen, production, storage, transportation, the problems and solutions, but that's enough for one day. Let us know if you want to see more content like this in the future. There's so much more to talk about when it comes to sustainable energy. So just hit that like button and drop a comment below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter. So sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.